Praise the Lord, hallelujah. God is good. God is good. Praise God, hallelujah. The theme of the message today is Awaken. It said that Jesus was crucified, but there were two people next to Jesus. And one of them was really trying to challenge the power of Jesus. And the other didn't have to challenge his power because he knew who Jesus was. He recognized the Son of God in Jesus. And they said that while well, one of them was telling him, if you are the Son of God, get off the cross and take us off the cross. You know, there's people around us all the time that they want us to prove something to them. Everything you do, you got to prove it to me. But it said that the other one told Jesus, remember me when you go into your kingdom. And Jesus answered, today, not tomorrow, not yesterday, but today, you will be with me in paradise. Hallelujah. Today. The love of God is so deeply in Jesus that he couldn't do no other thing, but even in his moment of death, he was thinking about somebody else. We live in a world that is self-centered where people only think about themselves. In a world where people are not awakened, in a world where you are in front of a person, but you are, you're not even looking at that person because you are testing somebody else. And that person is trying to communicate with you, but you're not able to hear because you are someplace else. But one thing that I learned from Jesus is that he was always present. And he is present today. He's here today with us because Jesus is in the here and now. He said today, today is the day of starvation. Today is the day for your healing. Today it says if you hear my voice, do not harden your heart. But know that I'm here for you. Jesus lived in the now. We live in the world that doesn't live in the now, but still lives in yesterday and what happened yesterday or what's going to happen tomorrow. But you know why Jesus was able to feel other people and to know what was going on with other people? Because he was living in the now. He was awakened. He even felt a lady that was in the multitude, that lady touched him, and he felt her. He said, I know that a special touch was given to me because something came out of me when that person touched me. Sometimes we get to know that things are happening in our house we come, we come to be the last one to know because we're not living in the now. We're not living there in the house. We're not, we're not feeling our children. We're not feeling our husband. We're not feeling our wife. We're not feeling around us what's happening. But Jesus was able to be living in the now and know what was happening at that moment. He was able to see. <coughs> And still today, 2,000 years after Jesus' death, he knows what's happening. He knows every moment of your life. He's in the presence with you. You could ask him for anything. He said, ask and you shall receive. Knock at the door and the door shall be open. Because he's here in the present time with us. We need to live the present. We need to live now. 
You know, some people don't even know what happened yesterday because they, they were not living yesterday. Some people are never awakened. Some people are sleeping and they die sleeping. They never awaken because they never lived the moment. Today is the only thing promised to us. It said that yesterday is gone and tomorrow may never be ours. But today we have today to live. We have today to thank God for the morning, for this beautiful morning that we were able to wake up and feel the presence of God in our life and know that we are not alone, that God is with us. Hallelujah. We have to have Jesus as a model to live. He was able to see the multitude and know what was happening with them. He was able to go to the people and heal them and give them hope because he was living that moment with them. And we need to do the same thing. We live in a world that lives through cell phones and through computers and people don't even know what's happening to their loved ones or what's happening around them. We have become so blind that today and day, 2.4 million people are in prison. And we say, how did that happen? Because we were sleeping. We were sleeping. And it just woke us up that 2.4 million people. We have more people in prison in the United States than any part of the world. And we go to other countries to fight, according to us, for peace for those countries. But we don't have no peace in this country. Because people are not awake, and we need to awaken. I said we need a movement of people that they walk inside the prison and sleep in the prison and tell, just like Moses, let my people go. Eighty <coughs> percent of the people that are in prison are there for nonviolent crimes. And like 65 to 70 percent are black people and Hispanics inside our prison. It said that today in days because of immigration, the Hispanics and black are going up and down. One day it could be 75 black and the other day it could be 75 Hispanic people inside the prison. Meanwhile, all this is happening, and we are sleeping. We're not living the moment, we're not living today. We're only thinking what's gonna happen tomorrow, what happened yesterday, but we need to come to earth. We need to put our feet in the ground, and we need to start being awakened and see what's happening around us and fight for the rights of people that don't have no voices. I heard a sister saying that we live in a suffering world. We have a suffering people. We ourselves are suffering people. I call myself a wounded healer. I have been wounded so many times in my life, but I'm using my wounds day by day to heal other people, to reach other people. Because that's the calling that God has given us. It's not only about us. It's about the world and things that are happening around us. And I tell you, sister, the people that started mass incarceration, they were not sleeping. They knew what they were doing. They were afraid because after the civil rights movement, they said, we are really scared of these people. They're gonna take over, they're gonna take our land, they're gonna take everything that we have, they're gonna take our authority and our power. We need to do something. And they did. They brought drugs to our community. Our community didn't have no money to buy drugs. But we were sleeping. Our community didn't have no money to set a business of drugs. But they brought the drugs. And they brought the guns. Because they were setting up the environment and everything around us to start taking our children and incarcerating them. I told you before, when white people, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a racist, I, I, I love white people, I love black people, I love everybody. 
but the reality is the reality. When white children started using crack, that they used to call it free basin at that time, do you know what happened? The community got together and said, we need clinics. And they started building clinics. But you know, the black community was sleeping. No offense, you were sleeping. We were sleeping. And some of us are still sleeping. And today is the day to wake up and smell the coffee, like they say. We need to wake up and see what's happening in our community. Where are the young people? Where are the black men? But you see, when we had the same problem in the black community, the kids started using drugs, the community got together, and you know what they said? We need to build prisons. And they started building prisons all over. And that's why we have so many young men. At one time, uh, according to Michelle Alexander, there was a meeting that uh, Obama was talking, and he was saying about the black men of America not being responsible for the family, not being there for the family. But I said, was he, was he sleeping, Obama? The majority of our black men are in prison. And many of them, whatever they did was criminalized in order to put them in prison. Because politicians, corporations, the media, they're all together to criminalize and to get our people in prison. We need to awaken, we need to wake up. We need to look at what's happening around us and see where are the black men, they are in prison. It's not that they abandoned their family, it's that one day they were kidnapped and they were taken into prison and all the rights were taken away. And many young people have committed suicide because they cannot handle the abuse inside the prison. Because it's pure abuse. I remember uh, Sherry, this girl came into Rackers Island she was only like 16 years old. And an officer came to me and told me, Reverend Lopez, there's a, a young lady that since she got here, all she's been doing is crying. She's hysterically crying. And he said, can I bring her to you? I said, yeah, bring her to me. So he brought her to me. And uh, when she came to my office, she was still hysterical crying. So I let her cry and I hold her until she would calm down. When she come down, I, I asked her, uh, what happened? How can I help you? And she said, uh, well, I went with my friend to the uh, corner store to buy something because we were looking at uh, a TV and we wanted to buy something to eat and continue looking at our show. And when we, we came out of the store of the bodega in the corner, uh, they were searching certain people and they told us to put our hands in the wall, so we did. And they searched us and they didn't find nothing on us. But somebody threw something in the floor and they took all of us. And she said, um, my mother is not home. My mother, she's a driver of trucks and she's driving a truck someplace in the United States. So I was able to connect with the company and get her connected to her mother. And she calmed down when she started talking to her mother. And her mother said, I will be there tomorrow to bail you out. Well, tomorrow never came to that child. I remember in the morning when the officer called me and said, Reverend Lopez, come down because one of the ladies has committed suicide. And my greatest fear was in front of me when I went to where Sherry was. She was in the floor naked, dead. She had overdosed on some medicine or some pills. And I tell you that this is something that I have seen over and over again in our jails and prisons in the United States. So many people taking their life because they cannot take the abuse. And young minds, when you take a young mind and you put them in a situation where they don't know what to do or what to think about what's happening to them, all they think about is to get out of that place. And usually to get out of that place means to take my life in order to get out. She didn't even think that her mother was coming in the morning. It was too much for her, and she took her life. So we had to wake up. We had to live like Jesus lived. He lived every moment knowing what was happening around him. 
Jesus lived every moment knowing what was happening with the people. He knew that the people were oppressed. He knew that the people were sick. He knew that the people needed help. And he was there to do it because he was in the moment living. We need to live every moment of our life like if it was the last day of our life. We need to really care for one another and take care of those that don't have no voices, of those that are oppressed, of those that are behind bars, of those that are in situations that they don't know what to do. We need to come back and say to the Lord, Lord, remember us. Remember me like this man told Jesus. Recognize that Jesus is among us. He's in the face of those that are homeless. I see Jesus in the faces of those that are in prison. I see Jesus every corner of the United States. And he's telling us, look at me, I'm here, I'm present. We need to really come to consciousness of what's happening to us. I say that the United States is the laughing stock of all the other nations because we talk about peace. And we, take, we talk about taking care of people and we don't take care of our own. We are abusing our own people, incarcerating our own people, destroying our own people. And I said we have got to the point that we genocide our own people because when you create poverty and you create a situation where people cannot make it, you are genociding our own people. And that must be a strong word for many people, but it's the reality of what we live in today. The Lord is saying, today you will be with me in paradise. But he's asking us to be awakened like that man in the cross that was able to look at Jesus and notice him and know who he was. We need to notice that Jesus is right next to us, that Jesus is in us, that Jesus is here and now in the presence, that we need to call upon Jesus and say, Jesus, we need you. Jesus, the world needs you. Our men need you, oh God. Our children need you. Our young people need you, oh God. We need to be awakened. We need to put our cell phone aside. We really need to take a day to sit at the table with our family and really look at our, our, their eyes and see what's happening with them and really try to let them tell us their story so that we could know what's happening in the midst of our family, in the midst of our community. My father used to build tables in the land that we had in Puerto Rico. And he used to invite the community. And the first one that used to come to our house was a Catholic priest. He used to come and sit with my father who was a Pentecostal. And they used to talk about the community. And then the community used to come to eat. My father used to have turkeys and pigs and all kinds of animals uh, at the table. And people used to come and eat my mother's rice and beans. And it, it was a beautiful thing. You know why? Because in the table, we found out what was happening in the community. And we found out that sitting at the table together, we were able to heal the community. There were no issues that used to come by past because we were awakened. We knew what was happening because the people were telling the story one to another. When was the last time that you heard the story of your daughter or your son or your husband or your family member or your neighbor? When was the last time that you knocked at a door that you didn't know and just find out what was happening in the house and take care of business like God called us to do? Today is the day of salvation. Today is that God is calling us to be awakened. We have to live every single day today if you really want to look at your past and say, my God, I enjoy my life, live today. Live today because God is calling you today to look around you and see the needs of our community and see the needs of our children and take care of it. We, the people, have the power to bring change to our world. We have the power to bring change to the United States of America. We have the power to heal the oppressor because God has called us to heal and to be with one another and to walk with one another. Is the church believe this? Do you believe this? Do you believe that we could, do we have the power? Just as we have the power to forgive, we have the power to bring transformation, healing and justice to our community. If we just wake up, wake up, get up, be awake and know that God loves you and that God is with you and that God will never leave us or forsake us. In the name of Jesus, amen. Mm -hmm.